Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the Facebook Live that I'm doing for Craft TV and Highlight Crafts. Um, I'm Diane. I'm here to uh, give you a bit of a, a lesson on how to use Minecraft Studio. We've got the scene building USB on today. Um, I'm looking forward to crafting along with you, showing you some of the, uh, the bits on the graphics program, and then we'll make a, a finished an actual card at the end so we can see the paper side of the, uh, the crafting of it. Um, so yeah, we'll, um, we'll get into it in a second. Um, and uh, let's have a look at what we've got on the show today. So the first item we've got is our scene building USB, which includes the Minecraft Studio graphics program and the first four collections of two Red Robins um, artwork. And it also includes the Look, Learn, Craft Minecraft Studio um, USB. Now, the Look, Learn, Craft is the one that we um, had as um, Watch, Learn, Create. Um, from Creating Craft. So if you do have that one from Creating Craft, you don't need to buy this one. It is the same one. We've just brought it to you under Highlight Crafts because we've had a lot of people asking for it. So, um, but we do have that one here for you today. Um, and there is a saving if you buy the two together. So um, you're going to save £6.99. If you are a Nest member, you're going to save £11.29. So today you're paying £42.99. And if you are a Robin's Nest member, it's £38.69 from the HighlightCrafts.com website. The scene building USB on its own is available for £24.99 and if you're a Robin's Nest member you're getting it for £22.49 and then we've also got the um, Look, Learn, Craft USB so this is the one with the um, education it also has the graphics program on there and um, some projects as well that one is £24.99 as well and again if you're a Robin's Nest member then you pay £22.49 and then if you're not a Robin's Nest member already and you are looking to shop with Highlight Crafts, it's really worth joining the club. So it's £24 for a 12 month membership and the benefits included in that are 10% off all of your purchases on the Highlight Crafts website, free delivery on orders over £25, early access to web exclusives. You also get a Robin's Nest lanyard, a pin badge, special offers and a window sticker. You hear about workshops and retreats first. You also um, well, let's just say that the uh, the guys in our office are all clamouring for that pin badge, but it's a special edition just for you uh, Robin's Nest members. And at the moment, it's the Pip design, so one of our little Robins. It's really cute, and that comes in the package for you. So just make the purchase, and then every order that you place after that automatically gets 10% discount, and you're entitled to extra special offers when they arise. So, yeah, so uh, we do have a discount code for you today, um, and that is scene 20 so s c e n e 20 that's going to give you 20 percent discount off the entire highlight crafts website and it's um it's available for 48 hours so 48 hours from today and um yeah go go shop because i'm going to show you lots of other bits that we've got on there as well so we have got some new items that have literally just hit the website today and i'm going to use them in my demonstration so let's have a sneaky look at those so we've got our craftmaster glue applicators so these are incredible for just adding little dots of glitter now if you've ever seen me do um, a show on creating craft or one of my facebook lives you'll know that i love to just add little dots of glitter with um, a quickie glue pen or a glue applicator just to add um, just add highlights so this is the, uh, the product that i'm going to be using today to do that and then we've also got some printable acetate for you this is incredible acetate it's printable on an inkjet and a laser machine so um, you're getting 25 sheets in here so that's that's this one for you and then we've also got a couple of card packs which are really really beautiful card and it's it's high quality it's actually manufactured in italy so we have our mellow set which is this one here so you can see you're getting um seven colors and you're getting three sheets of each so all these seven colors on there and then we also have our rustic set and the rustic one has actually only arrived into the warehouse this week so um, this is maybe the first time you've seen this one and again you can get 20 percent off this one using the scene 20 code if you uh, if you wanted to purchase that um, so yeah, enjoy, uh, enjoy those purchases, but yeah, we'll show you those again in a little while. So the link for the Highlight Crafts website is in the description above, so in the, um, the post that you've clicked on to view this video. Um, so that's where you find all those amazing goodies and so much more. Um, there's lots of other things on there for you to, uh, to have, a, have a look at. So um, oh, we've got lots of, uh, lots of comments, so I'm just going to have a look at the, at the screen. So um, yeah, good morning, Jonathan and, and Donna. Um, 
Oh, thank you, Donna, for the lovely comments on the on the Zoom workshop. That was great fun. Hi, Helene and Edith and Lorraine. Oh, from Esther. Well, where's Elaine from? Uh, Lorraine from Estepo now. Oh, I'm not sure where if I know where that is. I'm really sorry, but it sounds very sounds quite exotic. So um, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, so let's get going, and we'll have a look at Minecraft Studio, and then we'll um, make a card towards the end of the hour, if that's okay with you guys. Okay, let's have a look. So the Micro Studio graphics program is designed by Crafters for Crafters. I'm going to start right at the beginning for anybody that's never actually seen it before. Oh, hi. So Lorraine's in Spain. OK, thank you very much for, for that. Um, I'll bet the sun's shining for you and I uh, hope, it's, hope it's very lovely where you are. Um, so we've got the um, graphics program designed for Crafters. And um, when you install it on your computer, the white area is um, your A4 page. It can be A5 if you want it to be. Um, it can be any size that your printer will allow you to print and we have the area over to the left hand side which is where you find all of the files and the artwork so you can see we've got the Minecraft Studio artwork and we've got a my artwork folder so this is where all of the designs from the USB will be stored we click on the plus and you'll see the two red robins scene building USB in there uh, just a little uh, hint there that's scene building one um, I may be working on number two at the moment um, so here we have the collections folder and we click on the plus so everywhere that you see there's a plus that means there's extra folders inside so we just keep clicking on the pluses until we get to a folder without one because then that means that's where the artwork is so you see here we've got a plus beside field of dreams so we've got field of dreams festive bird song which was our beautiful christmas one from last year forgotten corner and summer breeze on this particular usb click on the plus beside field of dreams and then you see we've got two folders without the plus so that means that there is artwork inside scene building and inside reflections i'm going to quickly explain the difference between the two folders for you straight away so the reflections are the a4 sheets that you will print off to use with your two red robins dies if you have them so these are the reflections images perfectly sized with the bleed on them so you can see you pop your die over the top run it through your die cutting machine and get the perfectly colored image but i'm just going to pop this one over to the side and if I go to scene building, these are all of the um, original images. So this is the original artwork that we actually got. Um, so this was all drawn for us by our guy, Max. And you'll see that it's a lot more delicate. And that's because these are the actual scene building elements. So you want the original um, delicate, fine barbed wire when you're actually creating um, um, extra elements and, and things on your scenes. So you can see we've got, um, that's the difference between those two. So for the for the purpose of the demonstrations today, we're going to be using the scene building folders rather than the reflections because we're not going to be doing any die cutting today. I have done a little bit of die cutting and when we get to the paper demonstration, I'll show you how amazing the, um, the print and stick that we've got on the highlight website is for using with your die cuts. So I'm um, just going to delete that one off the page. Just going to show you the other bits that we've got on the USB. So you see, I'm just going to scroll down here. So in each one of the collection folders, we've got the scene building and the reflections. So you've got all of that. So you've got all of the different elements from all of the dies in all of the collections. So as you can see in the festive bird song, all of the elements that made up the dies, you have them in here ready to actually build your designs. They, a lot of these ones don't actually have to be Christmas. So you see we've got the bell that could be for weddings. It could be for um, anniversary. It could just be an element that you'll pop into a scene on your card that's actually not specifically for an occasion. Um, we've also got the beautiful songbird there. So all of these were dies in the collection when we launched it and you now have them on this USB to create your scenes and, and build your designs. And then I'm just going to delete that one off the page. So press the delete button on my keyboard. There is also a delete button up at the top which we can press if we choose to. We've then got some scenes on here. So we've got 30 plus scenes. And these are A4 pages, so you can see we can just print this off and that's a beautiful background. Now you can print this onto our pure print paper, which is what I prefer if I'm using it as a background because I don't want to use cardstock, I don't want to add too much weight to my project on, with the background. But you can also print this onto the acetate, you can print it onto vellum for a softer look. But one of the other things that you can do is reduce the size of it and use it as a topper in itself. So when we bring an image onto the page with Micro Studio, you'll see we've got the boxes around the edges of the, uh, the design. So if I click off it, you'll see they're gone. Click back onto it, then the boxes are around it so we know that's the image we're working with. Put the mouse over the corner and you'll see that it changes from a single arrow to a double arrow. We click and drag towards the image to make it smaller and away from the image to make it bigger. 
So we could shrink this down and pop it onto the page and use that as a topper so that we've not done any scene building, we could just actually pop that onto there and then we can bring it back on again, shrink it down a little bit but not as much and then rotate it around at the bottom of the page, pop it onto there. So we'll just stretch that up just a little bit more on that corner there. So we've got an A5 piece of paper there with the topper to match that would fit perfectly onto the card with a little bit of matting and layering. If you wanted to have the background a little bit softer, you can see we can go into the effects tab, which is the, in essence, this is the, um, the graphics program, um, so to speak. So we've got the sliders. Now each of these do different things. You can see we've got the basic section, the color section, and the blur and emboss. With each of these, they, they do different things and we can use any combination of these sliders. So we've got, we, there, there are genuinely millions of combinations with all of these sliders because we have 360 different variations of color. For each of those 360, we have 200 variations of brightness. We also then have 200 variations of saturation. We can blur and we can use reduce the opacity. And we can do that on any of the designs that we've got and also any of your own JPEG or PNG images as well. So we're going to go to the opacity slider, slide it across to the left and you'll see that the image at the bottom is fading down. So that is actually reducing the opacity of the, um, the paper that we've got on the, back, on the background there. But you can see now if we were to do some matting and layering with this one and pop it onto here, you've got a nice soft subtle design in the background of your card and then you do your matting and layering with the, um, the top which is a full colour which then makes it stand out more and it makes it more of a focal point on your project. So that's just one of the scenes that we've looked at and we're seeing that we can actually do a lot more with them than just use them as they are. But there's so, so much more that we can do with Micro Studio. So I'm just going to show you a few of the different scenes that we've got. So we've got scenes for different seasons, we've got scenes for different occasions. So because we've got Christmas on here, we have got some of the wintry scenes, some beautiful floral designs. I love the woodland ones and the different textures and different styles as well. So we've got watercolours, we've got um, sort of uh, pastel designs, we've got some, um, some, um, some sort of digital designs on here as well, so lots and lots of different um, variations and um, sizes and styles as well, so lots of um, variety and all of these mix and match with the scenes that you're going to create because you're going to make your own scenes and you can make them on these papers, you can make them on the toppers that we've got on there or you can just build them from scratch completely. You can even pop a robin onto one of your own photographs if you want to, I love that. So um, I'm just going to clear the page down and show you a little bit more of what we've got on here. So select all and delete. So when we delete things off the white area, we're not actually deleting them from the program. We've always got them in the area on the left. So you see we, we changed the size and we changed the opacity of the first design that we brought on. We deleted it, but we've actually still always got the original one over on the left hand side. So what happens over here doesn't change anything within the original files. So I'm just going to press select all and delete those off the page as well. Have a look at some of the embellishments now. And we've got an embellishment for each of the backing papers. I love these because it's it's just like a little um, a little enamel dot for each of the backing papers. So you can see we've got a little bit of a shade and a little bit of um, a shine around there. But you can see that's actually, I've now made that particular one 13 and a half centimetres um, in, in size made it a lot bigger than the original one and we're not losing any quality. You can see it's now as big as the A4 page. Still got all of the quality because the graphics program is reading the quality of the artwork and giving you the quality that, um, that you expect with Minecraft Studio. So I'm just gonna delete those off the page and show you really quickly how we can create a background paper from one of these. And we'll just, sorry if I keep right clicking by mistake, I've, I've now started using a Mac and I'm also using a new mouse to me, so I keep pressing the wrong button, but um, bear with me. Um, so I'm just gonna reduce this down in size a little bit and I'm gonna press the button in the image tools that says tile and you'll see the white box has changed to blue. And when we now drag, instead of changing the size of the design, we're actually replicating it. So we're making a backing paper out of those so easy, so simple. This can be from a, a robin, it can be from a flourish, it can even be from one of the scenes. So you can turn a scene into a tiled backing paper to make your own, um, your own completely unique design. Um, and then we can go back to the scenes actually. So we'll go back to the scenes and we'll find the one that this came from, which uh, is this one here. 
and we'll just pop that over the top and go to the effect and we'll reduce the opacity of this one so then you can see we're blending the two designs together and because this is quite a strong design around the bottom but very soft at the top we're actually seeing a lot more of the um, the tiled design underneath at the top than we are at the bottom and I really love that it actually blends the two together so um, so we should go back to the files and we'll just select all and delete those um, so in the embellishments folder we've also got some flourishes down at the bottom and we I popped these ones in just because sometimes you just want a little bit of something different when you're making a project. You don't necessarily want it all to be um, scene related and you may want something subtle, you may want to make your own paper and you may just want to add a little bit of a little bit of something subtle onto the onto your project. So we've got the um, a few flourishes here, we've got a couple of borders as well. So a couple of little borders there you can see. And then we've also got some solid tags. And I popped these on because there are tags in the next folder that we're going to have a look at. But um, you may want to mat and layer and you may not want um, the same tags um, to mat and layer with. So we've popped a solid one on which you can then change the colour of to coordinate with the design that you're creating. So we're going to select all and delete. So clear the page down. We'll have a quick look at the toppers and tags folder. So in this folder I created some toppers, tags and inserts. And you'll see that we've got the topper, the tag and the insert that coordinates for all of the different sets. So all of these are perfectly coordinated. We've got different um, collections so you can see here we've got the topper, the tag and the insert for this one. And you've got some for each of the um, collections. So we'll go down and we'll have a look at this one here. So again this is the design that we were just looking at. So we've got the top of the tag and the insert. We've got different styles. There's always somewhere for you to write on with the inserts. Different styles and designs in there. Different shapes of toppers as well. And the reason I put these on is because with Micro Studio, you may just want to make a quick card. Now, there's been a bit of debate in the Micro Studio Facebook group this week about whether digital crafting is actual crafting. Now, yes, in my opinion it is, uh, because you're still being creative and you're still making something. So whether you make it on the computer and then you print it out and you just fold a sheet of card in half and that is the card that you're giving to somebody, you've still created it. So I, I personally believe it is 100% still crafting. And we can also then create our own designs and with Micro Studio you can create your own sheets like we just did with the scene. Create your own sheet and then make it into a layered and card with die cuts on it and you can still do your inking. All papers that you buy in paper kits have been printed somewhere. If you printed it at home you can still do your inking techniques on it. There's no reason you can't do all your stamping and everything else that you would usually do with your digital crafting. The only, I, th I think the only drawback with digital crafting is you get so lost in, um, in the graphics program that, uh, that you do spend a lot more time crafting than, um, than you maybe would do with your paper crafting but uh, you know there's a lot worse things you could be doing and uh, and I actually absolutely love it um, so yes that's that's my take on it so um, back to uh, back to this uh, fabulous USB so we've got some textures and colors on here as well so we'll just have a quick look at some of these so these are colors that go with the designs on the USB and we have some solid ones and we have some textured ones and you can see it's just a very gentle color wash on there and then we have some solid colours at the bottom that are just there for you to just change if you want a particular tone and you want to do your matting and layering and maybe you want to crop it and you just want a certain amount of a, a specific colour then you can actually um, do that with the, with the graphics programme. So we'll just show you how to change the colour of a design now and we'll get one of the scenes on. So I'm just going to go to the scenes folder. So we'll go for one that's got quite a lot of colour in it. We'll have a look at this one here. So absolutely beautiful. I love the the, the gorgeous purple flowers at the bottom of this one and I love the texture on this paper as well so so gorgeous so um, we're going to go to the effects tab again which is where we find all of the uh, all of the magic and we'll have a look at the um, the sliders um, now I'm just going to say I don't know if you guys are picking it up but we have a little bit of vibration going through our building um, so we're in a new building and the next set of um, units next door is actually being the construction started on the groundwork at the moment so every now and again everything's rattling and vibrating so if you are picking it up we're not having an earthquake it's just the builders next door so um, yeah <laughs> apologies for that but um, yeah I thought I'd let you know what it was so, you, so you're not wondering 
Um, okay, so let's have a look at this color change. So we're gonna go to the color section in the effects tab, and we're gonna go to the hue slider. Move this over to the right, and you'll see we're changing in real time, and we're changing to shades of blue, shades of green, shades of purple, and it's just absolutely, I mean, I love when we, when we get into this one, we just, every single image, gives you the same color tones. So you've got 360 different colors for every single image, but then we can always go back to the original. Now we have the rainbow slider. And for this one, you'll see that where we've got some yellows and greens, and then we've got the vibrant purples and blues at the bottom, they actually will all change to different colors. So it will, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> um, so the colors will kaleidoscope around the, uh, the image. So um, I'm gonna use the rainbow slider now and we move this across to the right, just like we did with the, the hue slider. But you can see now we're getting quite, um, quite psychedelic um, finishes on this one. But you may be making a mixed media project, you may be making a canvas, you may be making something completely different to a two Red Robin style design, and you may want something like this. But then we can always go back to the original if we choose to. But it just shows you that you can do this with any image that you've got. So whether this is a backing paper from another USB or whether it's a photograph that you've got or a, something that the children have drawn and you've scanned in and saved it as a JPEG, then you can actually do this with that as well. I'm going to grab another one of the scenes that's got different colours in it. So get this one here and I'm going to select all so that I've got both images selected. So you can see we're working with both pages at the moment. I'm going to go back to effects and I'm going to show you that when we use the hue slider, even though they're both very different to start with, when you use the hue slider, they both change to the same shades of green, shades of pink, shades of blue. So you can make them tone together, even though they were very, very different to start with. However, when we use the rainbow slider, because there's different levels of colors within every single image, every image will give you a different result. So you can see the one on the left is a little bit more subtle because we've got less tones in there, but we're still getting, oh, that was, that's gorgeous, isn't it, for autumn? And we're still getting lots of beautiful colours and tones and shades through there, but you can see the difference between the two. So you don't always get the same image, same colours when you rainbow the, the design, which I think is fabulous because it means that you'll get, it's, it's kind of like a lucky dip slider. So you, you kind of have a go with that one and see whether you like it or not. Um, so we've also got the, um, let's have a look at the other sliders. So I'm going to have a go with the emboss slider and show you what that one does. I'm going to get, um, let's, we'll, we'll stick with this one here. And I'm going to copy and paste so that we've got a second one on the page. So we're going to click the copy button and then click the paste. You can right click and copy and paste as well if you choose to. And you can also use the keyboard shortcuts of Control and C and Control and V. So we're going to go to the layers tab. We need to make sure that we're working on the top one of the two layers. So at the moment we've got two backing papers, identical, literally placed straight over the top of each other. I'm gonna go back to the effects and I'm gonna use the emboss slider. So the second I move the first slider, the top one is gonna go gray and that is perfectly normal. Please don't panic if that happens. And we're gonna move this slider probably about a quarter of the way along. Then we're gonna use the width slider and we're gonna move this along and you'll see that we actually start to get an embossed version of the design. So the amount slider determines the depth of your emboss. So you can see we're getting really, really deep into there now. And the width also is the, the width of the embossed line. So it's kind of like the size of the embossing tool that you're using for, um, it's, it's kind of a way to explain it. So you can see down at the beginning, so you've actually got You've got very fine lines. You can still see all the detail, but it's as if you've used a, a smaller embossing tool to um, to go around there, around the detail. But if we go a little bit further, it's like we've got a, a larger embossing tool, got a bit more detail in there, um, and we've um, we've softened the edges a little bit more. So we're going to go to the opacity tab now, slider now, and we're going to reduce the opacity. So remember, we've still got an identical copy of this underneath. So if we bring down the opacity on this top one, and you see that the top one becomes transparent and the bottom one starts to show through, but actually now the bottom one looks as if it's been embossed. So it looks as if you've actually embossed it with your um, with an embossing folder or something. I'm gonna zoom into the page so that you can see the detail a little bit more. So you can see it actually looks like you've got embossed paper on there. And I'm just gonna take it back so that you can see the difference. So you can see there, obviously there's the gray one, 
but then as it appears you can see we've got we've got more and more of the image below showing through and we can go all the way down and, and make the top one disappear but um, you can see I, and I love the fact that because these have got texture on them we've actually got the paper texture coming through in the embossed detail so I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to go to the layers tab I just want to turn the top layer off so that you can see the difference between the two so we, we've got the little tick boxes beside the layers so we're going to click that one off and you can see there's the design and there it is embossed. If we click the bottom one off, we can actually just print that onto paper and it looks like you've actually got an embossed sheet of vellum. And at the moment it's gray. So what I also want to show you, because obviously it's softening the colors on the, on the bottom layer. So I want to go to the, back to the effects tab and we've got the color boost. I just need to make sure I'm still, yeah, I'm still selected on the, the top layer. Back to the effects tab and we've got the color boost section and this adds color in to well it adds in or it takes it away in any image so we've got red green and blue so you can add red in or take red out add green in take red take green out and it will affect all of the colors within the image by adjusting all the shades of red within that image up or all of them down lots of different options in here so with this one having quite a lot of green in it i'm actually going to add some green into the top layer so you can see there, we're now making it more vibrant. And if we go to the layers tab and switch off the bottom layer, we've now got a green embossed sheet of vellum that you're gonna print out. So you can print it onto vellum or you can print it onto, you can actually print that onto 140 GSM pure print paper and it would still look like vellum in the background of your design because it's got the embossed detail on there. So I just wanted to um, show you that. And then if we go back down on the green, and we add the red in so we can make it a bit warmer so you can see lots of different options on just one this is just on one scene i just i, I just love having the time to demonstrate my craft studio because it just makes me so excited so let's clear the page down and i just need to show you some of the um, actual scene building because that's the whole purpose of the usb so let's have a look at um, one of the toppers i'm just going to grab a quick drink of water bear with more on the second uh, excuse my massive water bottle Okay, so just a reminder that we're looking at the scene building USB um, with Micro Studio and two Red Robins. This is volume one. We do have a special offer for you today. And if you were to buy the scene building USB and the Look, Learn, Craft Micro Studio Education um, USB, you would usually pay £49.98. Today it's £42.99, so you're going to save £6.99. If you're a Robin's Nest member, and I really do recommend you, you join the club if you, if you are going to shop with Highlight Crafts, then you're going to pay £38.69. That's a saving of £11.29. Now, um, I showed you the um, printable acetate and the glue applicators earlier. If you're a Robin's Nest member, you could actually buy one of those for the, with the amount of money that you're saving on this collection. It's just um, it's a great price. So that's highlightcrafts.com to actually um, purchase those. And um, the scene building USB on its own is £24.99. £22.49 if you are a member, £2.95 PMP, it's free if your order is over £50, over £30 for a Robin's Nest member, £25 sorry, and again available at highlightcrafts.com. And then we have the Harmonix Rustic cardstock, so this is the one that we were showing you at the beginning, so you've got seven different colours, three sheets of each, it's incredible cardstock and it is um, it's made in Italy, absolutely beautiful, it's got a fabulous texture on it. 21A4 sheets, it's £11.99, £10.79 if you're a Robin's Nest member. And then we've got the Mellow, which are the beautiful softer shades. So again, 21A4 sheets, seven colours, three of each, £11.99 and £10.79 for Robin's Nest members. If you are not a Robin's Nest member, I highly recommend that you join, purely because you get lots of goodies, but you also get ex um, early access to um, new products and you also get um, extra discounts as well. So. For £24, you get a 12-month membership, and that straight away your benefits include 10% off every purchase you make on the Highlight Crafts website, free delivery on orders over £25, early access to the web exclusive. So when we bring out a Two Red Robins die collection, we always design some extra dies for our website, and those dies you get early access to. Um, then we have you also receive in the post a Robins Nest lanyard, a pin badge. So um, you get special offers emailed through to you. You receive a window sticker, whether you put that in the house or in the car, that's entirely up to you. And you hear about workshops and retreats first, which is, it's, it's fabulous because it means that 
you know, you get in there first, so you know that you're going to get your place, you know you're going to get your um, your early access to the, the products, and you're going to get the discount off them as well, which is just fabulous. So don't forget we've got the discount code, which is SCENE20, so S-C-E-N-E 20, so S -C -E -N -E 20. It's in the description, and that's off everything on the Highlight Crafts website. So all of the new products that we've looked at today, um, all of the, the dyes, everything on there, the pure print and everything. Except brother. Except for brother. Oh, okay. okay, so no discount on the brother products that we've just added, but um, everything else that's on there is covered under the SCENE 20 discount code. So let's have a look at some actual scene building now. So we're going to go with um, one of the toppers. So we'll we'll do a quick and easy one to start with. So we'll bring this topper onto the page. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that we yeah, it's easier to see what we're doing. So a lovely fence post there. It's just asking for a robin to sit on top, isn't it? So we're going to go to our um, where are we field of dreams. Go to the scene building folder, and here we've got all of the dies that were in that collection as separate images for you to build your scenes with. So we'll go with Buddy, who's our Robin. At the moment, he's a little bit big to sit onto, uh, onto that post, but um, with Micro Studio, you can change the sizes. So we have the, um, the advantage that we can build our perspective in correctly. So let's have a look here. So because he's gonna sit on this post, we want him to be maybe about this big, maybe he's a little bit too big there. So we'll bring him down in size a little bit more. So there's our robin and we'll just bring on our let's just bring on some barbed wire and we'll pop that we'll rotate it so to rotate the image we just click above where we've got the boxes you get the circle click above and then drag your mouse around just to whichever angle you you like if you press the shift button on your keyboard it snaps to 45 degree angles you can see it tells you what angle you're working at but if you don't use your shift button then you can get it to any angle you like and it does tell you what the angle that you're working at as well so we should pop that over the bottom there. Now at the moment we can't really see that, so we're gonna add a little bit of a drop shadow using the graphics program. So go to the effects tab, and we're gonna scroll down in the effects tab to where we see the drop shadow. I'm gonna go to the depth slider, so you can see the drop shadow starting to appear now. Um, we can have the, the shadow pretty much as far away from the image as, as we like, it just depends how far away you want, um, want the sun to be and then we can change the direction. So if the, if the light within the image that you're, um, you're working with is coming from a specific area, so you can see in this one, the, um, the light from the hay bales, the, the reflection of the hay bales is going across the field. So we're gonna have, have it going across to the right on the barbed wire as well. And at the moment it's a very solid drop shadow, so we're gonna soften it a little bit using the blur radius. So you can see there, we just soften that and it just means that we've got a little bit more dimension on the barbed wire and you can see there it just stands out that little bit more um, and I'm just going to use our um, scissors tool and we're just going to get rid of the area outside of the topper so I'm going to go like this with the scissors and we'll get rid of that bit just there so we'll keep the outer okay so the way that the scissors work so you've seen how quick and easy they are to use we have the image selected we press the button in image tools that says scissors and then with every snip with your every click with your mouse is a snip with a digital pair of scissors so we're going to start to snip just above the design and then we're going to come down the edge of the topper so this is as if you have popped your barbed wire onto the um, topper physically but you want to snip away the excess so we're snipping around the area um, where the, we where we want to get rid of the the barbed wire and then when we get back to the beginning, you'll see the black line changes to a blue line, and that tells you that you're back at the beginning. So the red area that was highlighted is now blue. And then we can keep the inner or keep the outer. So if we keep the inner, it keeps the area within the blue, and if we keep the outer, it keeps the area outside of the blue. So we're gonna keep the outer. And there you can see we've actually taken the um, excess of the, uh, of the barbed wire away that we don't want. So we just built a little, really quick and easy scene that we've built there onto that topper. Um, and then we'll just do another one that is a bit more detailed. So we'll add, we'll bring up a new page and we'll get rid of the grid and the ruler. You can leave the grid and ruler on. I personally, I prefer to um, work without it unless I'm trying to line something specific up, but also when we're showing you on the camera, it does actually make it a lot easier for you to see without the grid on there. So we'll get another topper on the page and we'll go with, let's go with this one. 
So I'll go with the first one and we'll bring it onto the page. I'll make it a bit bigger so it's easy for you to see. I'm gonna go back to our Field of Dreams collection and we're gonna start by building a bit of a fence, I think. So we'll pop a fence down at the, at the bottom. So it's a little bit big at the moment, so we're gonna squish it. So rather than actually reduce it um, in proportion, I'm gonna squish it because I want a slightly wider fence post on this side. So we'll pop that just there. And then we'll right click and copy, right click and paste. That gives us an identical one over the top. And then this time I'm going to shrink it down a little bit more, but I'm also gonna pull it in a little bit to make it thinner. And I'm going to flip it so that it doesn't look like it's an identical piece of fencing. And then we'll get a larger piece for over the other side. This is a little bit too large, so we're gonna shrink that one down. So we'll pop this one over here, shrink it down a bit, um, maybe not that much. So we'll go to about the same height and then we will, again, we're gonna squish this one in, right click and copy, right click and paste. Bring this one out. I'm gonna squish this one in a little bit more. Again, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna flip this one so that we're not looking like we've just got, because no, when you're looking at the fence panels, when you go for a walk in the countryside, they, the, I mean, the, the forgotten fences just never ever look identical, do they? It's, it's like flowers, you know, two flowers, notice flowers are exactly the same. So I'm just getting a little bit of variety into the design there. So we'll get another one of the fence panels on. And this is quite a big one, so we'll bring this one down. So bring it down and reduce it in size and shrink it in. And then we'll have another one of these. So we'll copy and paste this one. Bring that one over there and then we'll get our little tiny thin one again and bring this one over this way so we can start to create the actual complete fence so pop that one there and we'll copy and paste another one of those and we'll bring this one down and we'll flip that one so we'll flip it that way and let's have a look at that one so we'll go a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner on this one and we just need another fence panel in there so we'll go with this one here which is the largest one of that was in the die set so it's the the biggest one on there so we'll pop that one onto there shrink it down and squish it in a little bit and there's our fence we'll pop a little bit more over this side i think we need to uh, to fill that side out a little bit so we'll bring this one in and Shrink it down, pop it over there, squish it in a little bit, and we'll just oh, we'll move to the top of then, so we should grab that and pull it back down again. Just need to nudge that one up a little bit. And then we'll just add a couple of the um, horizontal ones again over there. So we'll copy and paste this one and bring this one over here. And then squish that in and then copy and paste and bring that one down. We'll bring that one down to them. We might even put that one at an angle because you know the fence has fallen to pieces. It's in the countryside somewhere, isn't it? So um, pop that one there. And then we can pop a little bit of our, um, do we want the chain link fence or do we want the barbed wire? Let's have some barbed wire on the fence. And so we'll get this one here and we'll shrink it down in size and shrink it a little bit more and we're going to pop this just over here so it's going between the two fence panels and i'm going to add a little drop shadow to that one so i'm going to go back into the effects tab add the drop shadow so that you can see straight away when you add the drop, drop shadow it just makes the design stand out a little bit more and just soften it with the blur radius again just so it's not just a solid sharp um, shadow so we'll pop that one there and then we'll add another one of those. So we'll copy, paste, and we'll flip the other one so that it goes in the other direction. So there you can see we've got the two there. So we'll leave that one up there and bring that one down a little bit. And then we'll just change the angle on this one. Bring that one down a little bit more. And then let's pop one of our robins on here. So we'll go back into here and we'll go down and let's have a look at our other robin. So we'll get Pip on this one. So Pip obviously is a little bit larger at the moment for the size of the design that we're creating. 
So we're going to pop him. So now, now is the decision time because we can either pop him onto the barbed wire. So he's sat observing from there, or we can pop him onto the fence post so that he's observing the world from there. We can even pop him into the tree if you wanted to. So we could have Pip in the tree and then we've got Scuttle, so we'll put Scuttle down at the bottom, so pop him down here, so have him a little bit larger because he's obviously um, closer to us than, um, than Pip. And I think we'll use Willow this time actually, so we'll pop Willow on the, uh, on the fence, so we'll pop him, shrink him down a bit and pop him just up there, so he's, He's having a chat with Pip, so you can see they're, they're facing each other, so they're having a bit of a chat. If they weren't facing each other, we could use the flip that we've been um, been looking at to uh, to rotate one round. And Scuttle's having a look for some uh, some goodies to bring home for the babies. And there's um, there's one of our scenes on on one of the toppers. So this is the reason that I put the toppers on the USB in the way that I did. So the toppers they are perfect for. Um, quite generic designs if you're wanting something and maybe you want to pop some die cuts on there or you want to um, just pop a, pop a sentiment on and you don't want any extra detail on there then you can use them as they are but I actually left them quite plain so that you can build your scenes onto them and you can personalize them you can mix and match the collections and um, and do anything you like onto onto the uh, the toppers in in that way um, in fact I'm just gonna pop you know every time I look at this I see something else I'm gonna get our rusty bucket and I'm going to pop that down at the bottom as well. So it's going to pop one of those just down there. And actually, I think maybe somebody's knocked it over. So we'll just have it on the floor like that. And we'll add a little drop shadow to that just to finish off this scene. And then hopefully I've still got time to make a card because I think I've got a bit distracted. So let's have a look. Um, there we go. Just, I'll add the drop shadow, make it a little bit bigger. Oh, there we go. I need to move the slide. There we go. And then move the drop shadow down, soften it a little bit more, and there you can see. So now I'm going to zoom in so that you can see. We've got our drop shadow, and we've got our somebody's somebody's lost their bucket, and the robins are all having a bit of a, a chit chat in the countryside. Um, so that's the uh, that's how we've built that particular scene there. So um, I'm just going to have a quick look. Have we got any questions? Do we do we think? Um, and then I'm going to have a go at making an actual card. So I'm, just, I'm going to pop the laptop over to one side, bear with me one second. Pop that over there and then I'm going to get my card ready to make. So here we've got a card that I've created. So this is actually um, similar to the one that we've just, um, just done in the, uh, in the demonstration there and we're going to make the project so I'm just going to have a look and see yes yeah, so I wanted to show you on this um, the printable acetate that we've got so there are um, it is um, it's inkjet and laser printable so this is printed on an inkjet um, and this was dry as it came out of the out of the printer um, and this one hasn't dried because I printed on the wrong side so when you've got this acetate you actually need to print on the smoothest side so it looks a little bit um, frosted when you look through and you're looking through the smoothest side so you can see here this one I actually printed before we came in here and this one's still not dry it's still it's all smudging there so you need to make sure you print on the correct side um, and it's the side that feels the smoothest but actually looks like it's got a little bit of a matte finish to it so um, if you get it home and you're not quite sure, drop me a message and, um, and I'll help you with it. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely fabulous acetate because it's inkjet and laser printable and that's not something that you find very often. So let's have a go at making this card. I'm just going to pop some glitter onto one of my um, little embellishments. So let's pop that card over to the side. I'm going to grab a sheet of paper so I don't get glitter everywhere. You know, <laughs> We've all been there, haven't we? So I'm going to pop this on here, I'm going to get one of my glue applicators and this is one of my um, old bottles of glue from, um, from many moons ago to be honest with you um, and I, the glue, has, the cap has, um, has dried up um, and I can't, I can't actually get any glue out of there but the glue inside the bottle is absolutely fine so I'm going to use one of my glue applicators so this means that I'm not 
um, you know, I'm not wasting this, um, this glue. So I've got my glue applicators here. Um, so these are the um, ones that we've got. So the pack of 100 and they're super fine detailed ones. So we're just going to pop this to the side. I'm going to use a little bit of glue out of the bottle. So we're just going to dip this into here and we're going to pop a little bit of glue. So you can see we've got a little tiny bit of glue, just a little bit of glue on the glue applicator. And we're going to pop a few little tiny dots just on this embellishment. So just randomly and pop a couple bits there. And I'm going to pop that to one side so I don't get glue everywhere because that's usually what happens with me. Make sure I put the lid on my glue bottle because that's something else I've done before. And um, I'm going to use the, so this is the Craftmaster Shimmer and Sparkle set that I'm using that's on the website. So um, I've got the, the finest of the white ones. So in this collection, you actually get white, gold and silver and um, you get the large, medium and small in each of them. I'm just going to use my trusty Craftmaster knife to actually get that under there. And in the tool set with the knife, which also has a pokey tool um, attachment, you also get the scissors, which are the reverse the tweezers, sorry, which are the reverse tweezers, which mean once you've got hold of it, you can actually tap it on the back to get rid of the glitter um, and it's uh, you're not getting the glue all over your hand. So I'm going to pop that bit to one side just for now. I'm going to pop this to one side as well and I'll pop that back in there in a little while. Put the lid back on the glitter before the before that happens because we've all done that as well, haven't we? I actually sneezed once when I've got glitter on the table. That was a disaster. Um, so let's make a card. So, the, so this is the, um, the scene that I created for this particular one. So we, again, we use the same topper. Um, I made a, a fence, a rickety fence, popped the um, robin on there, popped Benji the bunny and some of the flowers from Forgotten Corner and Summer Breeze on there as well to add some colour to the design. And I've got some, this is the uh, backing paper again that's printed. And then this is the, the gold cardstock from the Craftmaster um, a sorted card pack but then this is from our mellow collection that is um, on the on the show today so I'm just going to grab my pokey tool which I love this Craftmaster knife and tool set so you get one of the handles and then you also get the pokey tool and you also get two embossing tool um, tool heads as well so this is perfect for getting the backs off your tape so there you can see we're doing that there so I'm going to pop that down I'm going to pop this onto here and pop that just down the center. So we're making a card where it's a square card, but I've just chopped a little bit off the front. So the top is going to overhang the edge. I'm going to pop that onto there. So pop the lids over to the side. I've got my backing paper that I've already um, added the um, matting and layering onto. What I've done here is I've actually got some barbed wire, which I've cut the reflections from the USB onto the print and stick paper that we have on the Craftmaster website. And I'm just going to show you how easy this is to use. So I'm just going to get the back off this one. So I'm going to get my pokey tool just to get the end there. And I'm going to peel the backing from this barbed wire. Now I have to be honest, one of the reasons I don't do as much detailed die cutting as I could do is because I'm really rubbish at gluing and I, I literally get blobs of glue everywhere on my project. So this product, this print and stick is the best thing ever for me. So I'm just going to pop this barbed wire down and there it is on my project. And one top tip, if you're in a room that is a little bit cool, like I am at the moment, just grab a piece of paper and rub over the top just to warm up the adhesive and then it will actually stick and burnish down properly. Um, because if the room's a little bit cool, then it can um, it can lift a little bit. So I'm just going to snip the excess off there. So just using my trusty old scissors to snip. I always snip it from the reverse because you get a cleaner look on the front. So there you can see we've got some barbed wire on there, but actually it looks like it's printed onto there, but it's because we've used the print and stick to uh, to add that on there. So again, just going to take the tape off the back here. and pop this onto the card. So I'm going to get this centrally onto the card. So there we go. So I'm going to have a little bit of the green showing on the left hand edge. Get that on there. Hopefully that's straight-ish. <laughs> and now we're going to use the, uh, the topper. So this is the topper that I created. 
but I also reprinted the topper onto acetate. So we're just going to grab a piece of card again to show you. So I've printed it onto acetate, as you can see. What I've actually done with the acetate is I've, I've cut it wider than the topper. So I've cut the, um, the top and bottom edge in line with the topper, but left about an inch either side. And then I've scored down the edges of the topper and we're going to pop this over to create a dome over the top. So this topper was actually printed about a centimetre larger than the original topper. So if I just show you this here. So this is the original topper and this one is actually just that little bit taller. So it's the same height as the actual matting and layering. So we're going to pop this onto here now. So I've got um, double sided tape on the inside of my tabs that I've folded. So we just want to create a dome, just create a little bit of dimension on the card. So um, pop that onto there. So we're going to pop this, just make sure it's the right way up. Yep. Because that would be an interesting card, wouldn't it, if I'd um, stuck it upside down? So pop that down there and pop this one onto this side. So again, take the tape off. And then I'm just going to make sure I've got it into the score line. So rather than um, you know, rather than just sticking it flat, we've got the score line. So we're just going to push the score line up to the edge of the topper and then stick that down. And the reason that I popped tape on the acetate and onto the card is because it gives you a super, super quick, um, very strong tack to it. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it doesn't slip once it's stuck down. So, um, so that's why I did that there. And then I've got some 3D foam on the back. So that's what that looks like with the, um, with the acetate over the top. So you can see we've got the, the double image there, just a little bit of extra depth and dimension to it. So I'm going to pop this onto the card. So I'm going to pop that centrally onto there. And I'm going to take the backs off my 3D foam. So I'll pop this onto here like so. There we go. And then I've got a couple of these little embellishments that I have already glittered. So um, hopefully you're going to be able to see the sparkle. Yep, you can see the sparkle on that. I see. Oh, Andrew's so good at his camera work, isn't he? It's just amazing. You can see that sparkle all the way from there. Love here and a little bit of glue on there put that to one side put that one up towards the top and then same again with the other one it's going to go down towards the bottom a little bit of wet glue in there and that one's going to go down towards the bottom just to make sure it's the right way up and I'll pop that there and there's the card done. So there we go. That's the card done. Oh, move that out of the way. So this is where I'd usually hand it to a presenter and they'd, they'd take it off and they'd, they'd do what they need to do with it. So there's the, uh, there's the card done and complete. Um, I hope you like that one. Um, and then um, how much time have we got left? A couple of minutes. Okay, so I just want to show you one other thing that, um, that, uh, that so sorry, I'm just changing my microphone maybe for one second. Um, so we have the so we look at the scene building USB, which is the um, two Ray Robbins first four collections, and then we've also got the Look Learn Craft, Craft USB in the bundle for forty two pounds ninety nine, uh, thirty eight pounds sixty nine if you are a Robbins Nest member. Um, saving 11 pound 29 being a robin's nest member i just I, if you're not a member it's definitely worth actually um becoming a member just to buy something like this and make that saving it's just incredible you only need to make a couple of purchases to save back the um the money that you're spending um so uh, so yeah that's uh that's the uh, so forty two pounds ninety nine thirty eight pounds sixty nine so you're saving six ninety nine if you're not a member um, but eleven twenty nine if you are 
and um, so I just really quickly want to show you this is the one this is one of the cards I made when we launched this um, USB on Create and Craft and um, also in the Zoom workshop so I actually made the artwork on it in the Zoom workshop and what I want to show you is how I actually covered the frame because I've had a lot of questions about it and we never actually got the time to do it in the workshop so I'm just going to really quickly show you how we do that so I have my frame which I have cut using um, a two red robins uh, fundamental rectangle die so what I did was I cut the rectangle um, cut the aperture using the rectangle die and then I slid the die across a little bit and cut it again to get the right size aperture because I didn't have the right size rectangle die but I'm also a bit rubbish at cutting with a craft knife if I'm perfectly honest with you so I used one of um, one of Stephanie and Nancy's old tricks to um, to do that there so I've got some tape around my aperture and I'm just going to take the backs off this, get my pokey tool because it's a lot quicker doing it that way. And take the backs off those. So then we stick the vellum. So we pop the frame onto the vellum and pop it onto there. And then we fold the vellum around the frame. So I always fold it and stick it in the middle and then work my way out to the side and then do the same at the top actually we'll do one of the sides so that we know that it's going down flat so we then go along the side and then along the top sorry it's sticking to my fingers so I'm moving it all over the place there we go and then we do another one down this side so there you can see we've got the the frame covered and then all that we do then is we get a craft knife so we'll get my craft knife and we cut from one corner to the other and this is where it doesn't matter whether you're lying straight or not because this is all going to be tucked around the back so we're going to go the same again over this side so go over there and then from this corner towards the center and then we snip off some of this excess because we don't want all of that. Ooh, there we go. Snip that away. So we're just snipping away the excess because when we fold it over the frame, obviously we only want it to go into the um, back of the frame. We don't want the excess going over the edges. And if we snip it before we do that bit, then it gives us a, um, a tidier finish. So there we go. So really, really quick and I'm quite crude on the cutting there, to be honest. And then we would just have some more tape on the inside edge. And we just fold around there so that we've got the frame covered as well. And then there we've got the beautiful vellum covered frame from a backing paper that is on the USB which we then popped onto the card which it looks like this so there's the vellum frame around the the topper and this is where we were talking earlier about the um, the flourishes you may just want to make something really detailed for your project but have a subtle design in the background um, so yeah so that was how we actually covered that frame so I really wanted to get that in there so there we go so I think are we about done I think um, so, okay, so we've got the Scene Building USB and Look, Learn, Craft MCS bundle, which is £42.99 today. That's a saving of £6.99 for Two Red Robins um, website. If you're a Robins Nest member, it's £38.69. You're saving £11.29. It's highlightcrafts.com is the website to, to go to. We have Scene20 is the discount code for all of the products on the website apart from Brother. Um, scene building volume one USB, which is the one we've demonstrated today, is £24.99, £22.49 if you're a Robin's Nest member. And then we've also got the Look, Learn, Craft. And again, if you did buy the Watch, Learn, Create from Create and Craft, this is the same um, USB. Uh, but if you didn't manage to get that one and you are one of the people that's been asking for it, we've brought it back to you at Highlight Crafts, £24.99, £22.49 if you are a Robin's Nest member. And if you're not a Robin's Nest member, you, you really should join the club. £24 for 12 month membership and your benefits include 10% off all purchases on the Highlight website, free delivery on all orders over £25. If you're not a member, the free postage is over £50 
um, early access to web exclusives and um, and also Robin's Nest lanyard pin badge and special offers and then you get a window sticker and you also hear about workshops and retreats first which is really really exciting because some of these things sell so quickly that if you're a Robbie's Nest member you get early access and you get to know when they come in before everybody else so you can be ready you can make sure you've got your place you've got your products and you know you're going to be crafting with um, with the goodies that you uh, that you need so um, yeah that's all uh, very exciting for you so um, so yeah so uh, thank you so much for all the the lovely comments um, I'd, yeah well so yeah so sorry i'm trying to read and talk at the same time i'm really not used to doing this can you tell i'm so sorry um so um oh so Teresa's saying this was um her first mcs and had all the cinderella cds and still have them um angela uh, yes yes i am working on the next one um so yes uh, the the plan is for these scene builders to uh, to keep coming um and uh, oh angela and you've been using mcs for years just like me, <laughs> still have the first one. Then Elite came out. Yes, uh, yeah, fabulous. And um, so, yeah, it's um, incredible. So, it's so so nice to hear all your lovely comments and and for you to join me. And you know, I'm not sat talking to myself. So, thank you so so much, everybody. And hopefully, they'll let me out to play again soon one day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>